Information discussed on Pocket Money with Jeff Tarbell is believed to be from reliable sources. However, no responsibility is assumed for inaccuracies. No statement made on this broadcast should be construed as a specific recommendation of a particular investment product. Views expressed are those of the speakers and do not necessarily represent those of CBS Radio. News only is directed. Smiles, everyone. Smiles. And prepare yourself for... Show me the money! Ladies and gentlemen... The radio broadcast experience designed to keep your wallet in top condition. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Talking Money. Talking Money. More money, more money, more money. And now entering the studio, your guru for fiscal fitness, Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. How you doing? Back at, back at it. Are you there? I'm here. Are you there? Check, check. Check, check. We are live in the studio. Alive and alive in the studio. And I got all kinds of crap. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Just, I'm going to do this. Stuff. Stuff. A lot of, lot of, thing, lot of things going on. Yeah, no, There's a lot of weird stuff going on. I don't weird know. stuff. I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, we'll get back to the weird. Speaking of weird stuff. <laughs> we start the same show with weird stuff every day. You, now, is that do you only wear that shirt on Saturday, or is that the only shirt you own? I cannot hear you, Richard. These are all different shirts. Don't hide your feelings from me, Richard. I got about seven of these. Okay, so they all look the same to me. They're all they all have the same sponsor. Oh, that's why. You might want to mix in like a polo shirt or something. I'm just throwing, throwing some things <laughs> this out is there. Colored. Oh yeah. Okay. There you go. Uh, you're right. It is that one is colored. That one's almost fancy. Yeah. What's happening in your world? Um, well, I think everyone knows that this weekend is St. Patrick's Day weekend, which Look is up. one of the, yeah, you're wearing your green. I'm half Irish. <laughs> it's one of my favorite uh, holidays, and people have always said, like, hey, we should get St. Patrick's Day as a holiday, and I say, like, that's dumb. What we need is the day after St. Patrick's Day to be a holiday. <laughs> Tuesday. I mean, I could go out at 7 o'clock. It's the 7 o'clock the next morning. That's the, uh, the hard part. trouble spot. So yeah. I think we need a push because people were talking about making uh, opening day for baseball a national holiday. Let's make the day after St. Patrick's Day a national holiday. That's Why don't you make opening day the day after St. Patrick's Day? We'll just knock it all out. Get it all in one? Yeah. So good. start baseball season earlier? Yeah, start it a little earlier. <laughs> With okay, bu- we can we can start with that. With a bunch of hangover, we'll we'll make a push for that. So there you go. My uh my thingy's falling off here again. I, yeah, my, you're, I, how come I can't hear hear you now? I don't know. Check check. Hello. There Hello? he goes. Okay, see, Hello? he's messing with us in there now. That's right. He, he's uh it was St. Patrick's Day is not wasn't last night, was it? So you and you're not even wearing you're I not even wearing been celebrating it yesterday. I got green. I'm all, I'm ready. I'm half Irish. The, the half the the pain in the rear half. <laughs> <laughs> is the half there the kelly half the headache half yeah the kelly. And, and let me tell you how nice it was this morning when my my daughter who's now 18 had to get up before me which is easy to do because i'm not early riser, and go to work at eight i was like yes this is coming around bring home the bacon <laughs> pay the bills i see i got three daughters and a wife all, I, all of them all of them if all of them go back to work i could keep working too but it would be <laughs> no that's no it's kind of fun she's having a a real job and saving for to go to college so that's nice. cool. well yeah that was good we got a lot of stuff going on i will uh now see now i was gonna this has been my theory all along and now and you know this but i didn't say it last week and now it's gonna look like oh okay you just yeah. oh you just figured that out yeah you're a genius you read the paper <laughs> i my theory all along was that that plane didn't crash it was stolen of my theory from day one because if you're going to st- well, first of all, if it would just crash under normal circumstances, we, they would have they'd have found it right somewhere along the line. If you're going to steal a plane and crash it, do you crash it in the ocean where, in the middle of the night where nobody can see you? Hell no. No. You make a spectacle out of it, and then you go on and tell everybody we did that. That hasn't happened either. I mean, nobody crashes a plane in the middle of the night by themselves. That's there's there's no publicity in that. There's no there's no so that does that doesn't that plane is sitting somewhere. Someone needs a plane for some sitting other purpose. In the hangar, hanging out. I bet you they're going to spray paint that sucker to look like something else, and they're going to use it for something else. Now, the question is, is what happens to the 229 people on board? I don't, you know. Right. Hopefully, they're sitting in a hangar also, waiting for these guys to come up with a, you know, with a plan B. But guys, they say people. But uh, anyway, it's a. If it wasn't for the tragedy of the 229 people, it's a fascinating. I guess it could be fascinating and tragic at the same time. It's a fascinating story, and mark my words, it's going to be a hell of a movie. 
if it comes to you know, if it comes to be out where these guys, you know there's 229 people in a warehouse somewhere waiting for you know for them to do their to do their deed with a plane next so they can you know it's going to be it's going to be remarkable i hope i hope for yeah. them, for them so anyway if it's a interesting interesting world I, I don't think i'll be booking a a malaysia trans <laughs> a crossover there in malaysia anytime soon but anyway that's interesting if you have a different theory than i do which is now no longer unique um you're welcome to uh, text it into us if you want text number here 44 11 40 as always phone lines uh, we'll clear them out and get them open at 339 11 40 1-800-920-1140 as i mentioned you can text us at 44 11 40 just as a reminder if you're going to try to win something today on the text line please give us either your full phone number or your name and address and we can get you in the u.s mail we still have a couple few ski tickets left. You know, I'm, I am not sure. Easter, yeah, which is so. almost the end of April. And, and um, so you know, we probably have a couple more storms coming in, it looks like, too. So we'll sa- if I have any ski passes left, I'll save them for, I'll count them up and we'll use them for the 29th. And if you want to come up and ski while John and I are up there, we'll think we'll take that little that little unit this time. <laughs> there you one. go. Put it in our backpack. And we, 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 if we could just and ski take your skis at the same time yeah, so you don't forget them and not, the car. And not lock them on the roof and then lock the car and then in a blizzard and then sit there. With, with no, the car running. With no shoes on. And us outside. <laughs> right. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> true story. <laughs> a true sad story. Uh, so we'll save those. But we do have Sacramento River Cats. And I don't. Hey, Chris, can you pull up their schedule for me? When, when do the River Cats actually go live? I, I want to say it's it's got to be right around the first day of April, I would think. Yeah, I believe so. Middle of April. Okay, so uh, I will start. So if you're if you're winning Rivercast tickets from us, just um, I didn't forget about you. I just don't have them yet. So I'm I'm saving all your names and I'll mail them all mail them all out in one big blast. And then those tickets are good for any game you want to go to. They're not state, they're not date specific. So have at it. Um, interesting week. See t- uh, t- yeah, tomorrow Sunday. Tomorrow is the uh, Russian vote. Do the Crimeans. Is it Crimea? I guess, I guess you'd be a Crimean or Crimea. Do they want to join Russia? That vote is tomorrow. Where is my little um, I had a note to myself on that? I'll find it here in a minute. And the market's kind of holding itself to see what happens. Now, uh, I think one of the jokes is there's only one uh, there's only one box to check. The answer is yes or yes. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that tomorrow. But that did not help Wall Street this week. And a lot of that speculation that uh, Russia is going to take over another section or, or have them join has pushed the market down almost 2.5% in one week, even with some positive news in there. Did help bonds a little bit. So if you were looking to uh, borrow this week, uh, interest rates came down a little bit early in the week and then it kind of settled back up settled a little bit. Settled in a little There's, bit, yeah. I, 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 I'll admit to you, I'm, I'm blown away and, uh, and went way wrong. I would have guessed that by now we're coming up on – First week of March, second week of March, I would have guessed by now rates would have been five or six percent. You know, if you'd asked me at the end of last year, mm-hmm. and they and they and they started going that way, right? First of the year, we were, uh, were we we were at five for a little while. Just there. about, yeah. And I would I would have guessed that would have kept going, but um, I'm not sure if maybe just like a super duper winter back east kind of cooled things down a little bit, and um, and so we'll see what happens with the market. But I think um, Monday's going to be a wild ride. Either. Everything's going to settle down on the on the on the Russia Crimea issue, which means that probably the stock market will take back off, or there will there will be some sort of a a vote that means that Russia is going to take over that part of the country, which means I think the stock market will take it in the can. So you might want to wake up a little early on Monday if you're a trader, <laughs> or if you got a bunch of money in the in, in the market and figure out uh, what you what you want to do. Where's your safe bet? In a small can of gold coins under the tree in the backyard. I, have you seen anybody? See, I left a can laying around. Let me find that. Let me know. Some classic gold coins. Speaking of, uh, this is this is not one I would think of. And, and John and I are, are, are just about destined. We will ski anywhere they have. They offer snow, and I will usually get there shortly, just before or after the snow was there. But uh, the um, put this on your. Let me. Uh, is this one on your bucket list? It'll be a long time before anyone calls this mountain town a tourist trap, especially the 9,000 feet with lows in the winter can plunge to 20 degrees below zero. There's two new hotels opening in the coming year. Bamiyan, B-A-M-I-N, perhaps best known for the Taliban's destruction of his ancient Buddhas, will have hotel rooms for fewer than 300 tourists. And Af- Afghanistan is trying to get in the snow ski business. Anybody, uh, so you can, fl- you, you can fly Malaysian air to the Afghan <laughs> snow ski thing. 
And um, if you can survive that, the avalanche will be the least of your worries. But uh, they were trying to get um, Afghanistan back in the ski business. Was not remotely on my radar. <laughs> well, you need to you need to expand your horizon because clearly Lake Tahoe is not going to have enough snow for us. We're going to have to go to the nine thousand foot, twenty degree below. Um, they're, ho- they're hosting an international ski challenge, drawing people from half a dozen countries. Yeah, I'm guessing oh, I'm, I'm not on the guest list. I'm here's thinking. the downside. Um, besides the fact that it take, might take you a little bit to get there, you have to snowshoe your way up to the top of the hill. They don't quite have yet the chairlift system that you're familiar with. Okay. So, <laughs> and I don't know if you're ducking and weaving like if, you, if they get, if they shoot at you all the way up too. That's that could be one hell of a run. You might want to put that on your list. So the Afghanistan ski council will be calling you. We will not be giving away passes there, although there is no pass necessary, just snowshoes. Just snowshoes. To Afga- uh, Afghanistan the ski resort. So these are the kind of things you wouldn't have learned otherwise on a Saturday that you now know there's Afghanistan skiing. So we'll cover that as well. With no chairlift. With no chairlift. No chairlift at all. Um, Jimmy Fallon, I'll get, all, I'll get all my weird stuff out of the way. Jimmy Fallon, how do you think he's doing? I think he's doing pretty did, good. Did, did you watch Jay Leno? Here and there. Did you watch Kimmel or... Um, David Letterman, same. I can't stay up that late. Right, I would. I, I would say, and I don't. I don't watch. What about you, then, there, Richard? I don't watch any of them, but it's usually because if something good comes on, it's going to be on the internet the next day. Exactly. Most most of their best bits are on there. I now I I, I uh, DVR Jimmy Fallon now, and I do watch it the next day in a more reasonable time. It mostly kind of like just like I'm not that interested in his guests. I just kind of wanted to do his monologue and then. And the guy's super talented. I mean, I don't care what you say. The guy's he's got he's got some real skills. So he's got uh, four and a half million people tuned in. And uh, Jay Leno was averaging four. Jimmy Kimmel and David Letterman aver- averaging about two and three quarters million. So he's he's kicking their rear, man. Wow. So that's a, that's Big a lot, numbers. lot of people. I, do, I like the part when he did splash the water in uh, Lindsay Lohan's face. Did you see that one where they do the water? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's pretty funny. So it's, it's good. But yeah, Chris is right. Uh, the majority of people are either watching the best of the show on YouTube or something like that the next morning or or DVR in it, but still four and a half million people. So good good turnout for him. I got all, I mean I got all kinds of financial stuff too. Here's my last one and we'll take a break here a little bit. I want to get into this this mortgage deal that's com- coming around. Um, this is pretty amazing. How much how much does the governor of California make? What's his salary? Do you anybody have a guess? Anybody have a guess? Hundred and twenty-two thousand. I don't. I don't. I don't. How, how much does the president make? I'm not sure. I know that. I want to say. I want to say it was a quarter million bucks. They may have raised that. Is that about right? About two hundred fifty grand. So the governor of California makes one hundred and seventy-three grand. The county executive officer for Orange County makes just under a half a million. For LA, he makes three hundred thirty thousand. Santa Clara, three thirty seven. Alameda, three hundred eight. San Bernardino, three hundred five. Sacramento, two hundred fifty eight thousand. So your basic county—I wouldn't say basic; it's it's a hard job, but basic county executive making two to three times what the governor makes. Now you could say, well, the governor is only one of many people making salaries down the run in the show. But if if you were the go, if you were the CEO, do you know that the the G, the gross domestic product for California is the same as Russia? It's in the it's I want to say almost two trillion dollars. It is enormous. If you, so if you were running a company, now maybe if you were running it the way the state of California is, you'd be fired. But if you were running a company with that sort of volume and that much business and that much responsibility, you'd be making tens of millions of dollars, if not hundreds of millions of dollars, if you were making any profit. So I I, I am uh, one that will tell you I think that that job is underpaid. Did you find the President makes four hundred thousand. Okay, so they, so they got got Just a little increased. bit increased, got a little bit of a raise. So four hundred since two thousand one. So two thousand one. Okay, so four hundred grand. Of course, the four hundred grand is just like that's just the start. That's just the the part that yeah, pays pays for your subway sandwiches and other things too. Because you make all your money writing books. The minute you, I mean, I think he's already made you know tens of millions of dollars for having someone ghostwrite a book and you put your name on it. And, and it's, it's not, I'm, I'm not picking on that president. They all yeah. do the same. Guest thing. speaking afterwards yeah. and all that. Yeah. Plus, your living expenses are pretty much covered, and you get to fly around in a fairly cool Cessna, little little plane. You get your yeah. own plane, so you know. I'm sure you don't have to spend a lot of money. Thirty five grand a month for your incidentals. Yeah. So, but I think that the uh, governor 
I think under seventy thousand, hundred seventy three thousand dollars for the state of California is light. No wonder we're not talk, attracting any top talent. The job pays. It's terrible. <laughs> you can go do something else for twice. Yeah, you can deliver the Sacra- you can deliver the Sacramento beef. You have a huge route and make one hundred seventy three grand. I mean, you got to cover most of Northern California, but they don't. And this is the problem with them. They don't need. They drive. I had to pedal. I had to pedal and I had to collect. <clears throat> don't get me started on this again. That's right. <laughs> this is it's a collecting part. It's a collecting part. You're right. It's People. The, the delivering is easy. The collecting. If I could have collected by credit card, I'd still be delivering the B. With your no square. Swipe. <laughs> yeah. This is why I'm wearing this thing. My arm hurts. It's throwing, throwing, throwing 60,000 papers in the morning. So anyway, I, I don't know what your thoughts are, but I think that uh, I think that that's underpaid. Underpaid as well. We're getting some text coming in, too. we got to take our, our first break here. Uh, I know where the plane is. Did you watch the show Lost? Yes. I don't think this is a, a Lost 2. Uh, this would be the world's best um, show promo if this is for Lost 2. Although I think there might be somebody fired uh, for that promo. But anyway, yeah, I, I, that certainly has come up a few times too. So let's get into our uh, question number one of the morning. Our phone lines are open if you want to jump in. 339-1140. 1-800-920-1140. And you can text us at 441140. But please remember, if you do that, which is fine, either give us your phone number in the text or your name and address if you want. Um, River Cats baseball tickets. We have a pair of those for each winner. Or some round table pizza, whichever you prefer. And uh, we'll take your calls and your, your texts. So what do you got on the tap there? Well, we're going to talk Wheaty Box. Who? You know, Wheaties cereal. Remember they Wheaties? Still, they still make Wheaties? They still make Wheaties, and they still put Olympians and other sports athletes on the front. You're kidding me. No. Last right. month, in, in spirit of Olympian, was uh, Sage Kotzenberg, who was the gold medal winnerist uh, for snowboarding. Okay. And the winner-ist? question, winnerist. <laughs> you caught that? He's not a winner. He's a winnerist. <laughs> yes. But the question here in in the spirit of sport is, which sport was most represented or is most re- represented on the Wheaties box? So would, they, would the Olympics be considered a sport, like all together? Or would it, be? it would be. Okay, so Olympics well, is a category. Olympics or Summer Olympics. Winter or Summer is okay. a category. And then all your big sports. All your big sports. I'm going to say hockey. There. I'm sure there's um, hockey probably leads the... It's on the list. Oh, is it? It is on the list. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, I'm not. That's the Olympic. But it's hockey. not the top one. So then, which sport is featured most on the box? That's right. I, I don't think I've had. I maybe have had Wheaties twice in my life. They're just not. I'm not a Wheaties fan. I guess. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure that anybody's really a big Wheaties fan, but they continue to print the box to people on it. Yes, absolutely. Well, somebody. I guess all the family buys the box. And I'll give you a little tidbit. So, 1935 Wheaties box, the original one, is now for sale on eBay for three hundred and sixty-nine dollars and ninety-five cents. And I'll buy it if you eat the cereal out of it. <laughs> Maybe it's just the box. Maybe there's no food in it. So, three three nine eleven forty, one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. You can text us at forty four eleven forty. Which sport has been featured on the cover of Wheaties box the most? Yes. I said hockey, and hockey was not number one. What, what, where was hockey on the list? Way down there. <laughs> Five. Really? Yeah. 20 Man. athletes. Must be a bunch of Canadians that like Wheaties. 20 athletes. This is Talk of Money, John Federero, Jeff Tarbell. We're going to be right back, Jack. Talk of Money. And we're back. It's Talk of Money with Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. We are back. Our Saturday here, morning. Yeah, numbers here in the studio, 339-1140. A couple phone lines open if you want to jump in. You don't have to have a brilliant question because you're not going to get a brilliant answer. So we'll both be on the same page there. You can uh, text us if you want, 441140. We did get a couple of winners on the text line, although the f- two of them that uh, texted didn't give us their name or their number or their address, so they're out. Uh, and the one guy did leave us, uh, Rick left his number. We got a hold of Rick, so he was right, and I think someone else called in too, so we had that right. I was guessing during the breaks. I didn't. I seen the list, but I didn't master. It. I, I was guessing. I asked John, and the question was, "Who's been on, or which sport has been on the Wheaties box the most?" And I thought, and I asked John, "Was is my, Michael Jordan? Was he the number one guy?" And, and is that is that right? And he was. Yes, he's got the most appearances at eighteen. So then I would guess that that by default basketball would have been number one, but no. Basketball was number three. Actually, baseball number one with one hundred and sixty-one athletes. Jeez. So, in the spirit of opening day for Little League today, 
I know there are a lot of kids out there running around. I was at pancake breakfast this morning. So baseball is a, a top notch. Still oh. an American sport. That's Apple a, pie and Wheaties. That's a, so is football number two? Yes, it was. And then what? And then basketball. Oh, then basketball. So 161 baseball athletes, 130 football, basketball at 48, Summer Olympics at 31, and then your hockey at 20. No and then way. we have golf, Winter Olympics, auto racing, tennis, soccer, and then tied, wrestling, marathon, and boxing. <laughs> All in one box. All in one box. <laughs> one dude who's who's wrestling and boxing himself. That's called MMA now. And, uh, yes. And there's no MMA on that list, so that's a, that's a travesty. And soccer was at the very bottom, that, just so you know, Chris, if you were asking. It sounds like it was before boxing and wrestling. Yeah, it could be. Well, no, it goes back to 1935, right? The first box was in 35. 1935 so, Wheaties yeah. box with Lou Gehrig on it. There you go. The first baseball player. So, all right. So, we got that. Got a uh, few people got that right. So, thank you very much for participating along. We'll get you out either some River Cats or some Round Table, whichever you choose. Up to you. Uh, did you did you catch? Well, we talked about this a little bit. There was a um, the Sacramento Capitals tennis team. Who who did some sponsorship of the show in the past, and they've had a run of not not so not so great run with ownership. Um, the, the last two last well two of the last owners have had some sort of financial problems that have led to bigger problems. And I'm and I'm trying to think. The first owner I think was I think he was in the exchange business or real estate exchange. I can't remember, but there was an issue there. This last one is interesting because. If you if you caught the Sacramento Bee from earlier this week, um, they're starting to list some of the people who got kind of caught up in in the financial um, Ponzi scheme of this of this latest owner of the Sacramento Capitals, and the, and the and a big name that you might recognize is Sammy Simo, who's a big developer and uh, you know kind of does a lot of commercial buildings, a lot of construction like that. Um, his family and friends were t- lost seven point one million dollars in that scheme. And and it's and and some of it was in his own. He'd set up a charity, you know, to a, fun, a charity to raise funds for charitable contributions. And when you do those charities, you want to find things you can put money into that can generate interest, so that the interest can be used to help the charity, and you can keep the principal going without getting into the principal of the of the donation. So I get that, and it, but it does it does go to show that really smart people can make dumb decisions. And I'll raise my hand. I mean, I've. <laughs> The number of dumb decisions I've made in my life outweighs the number of good ones by two to one, I'm sure. So uh, I don't sit here in judgment without being judged. But I do say this, that uh, one of the promises of the deal was a guaranteed profit of 19% return. And if that doesn't immediately, and I mean immediately, raise a red flag for you, then please, going forward, immediately have it raise a red flag for you. In an environment now, I don't. This goes. This goes back a ways, but there has been no time in recent history, and I mean in the last twenty something years, that nineteen percent return would be considered a reasonable expectation or guaranteed rate of return. And you get into an environment now where rates of returns are in the under two percent in many cases, and for really really good investments, mid mid single digits, and a lot of those aren't even are not guaranteed. You know, the stock market is not guaranteed, and the good funds are returning probably, you know, maybe even ten and eleven percent on certain when uh, certain quarters. But if you read anything or you see anything, and they're still out there, uh, I remember. I remember my dad used to cut out things out of the paper for me, saying, you know, look look at this, you're guaranteed a fourteen percent, or we'll guarantee these kind of things. And he's like, you know, we should we should be working for the FBI or something and just going after these because they're they're a scam. So. Um, you know, hopefully, if you if you're listening to this today and you see those those kind of things, and even by from people who appear to be reputable and on the up and up, I mean, you have got to ask yourself, does that sound does that sound reasonable? And there was a hundred and fifty million dollars has been reported of money that has been was lost, or I should say, taken, you know, illegally. And so, yeah, you can get, and that's how they get you, right? You you put in whatever amount of money, and you get that first return check. You're like, wow, awesome, you know. I put in a hundred thousand dollars, and I got twenty thousand dollars back. I got a twenty percent return. Well, they basically probably just gave you your own twenty back and pocketed the eighty, 
It's the second check that gets a little tougher, but then they have to go out and raise money from John. They got to get his hundred thousand dollars so they can pay me my next check and give him his next check, and they got to go to her and they got to get him and they got to go down the line. Next thing you know, you're hundred fifty million dollars into it. You got nothing. That's the ter- definition of a Ponzi scheme. So um, use that as your own lesson. And um, they're not always on such a grand scale of of money, but they but they are they're prolific, Pro- prolific. And why they're related to the tennis team is strange. I, I, <laughs> well, Last two owners here. Yeah, just reading them. I don't know why. I don't know, I don't know why team team tennis attracts. Uh, I, I I don't know. I'm sure there's you know there's all sorts of uh, of sports and things that all sorts of business ventures entirely that yes, just attract people. But um, I don't know. It's it's interesting. But uh, you know, p- please raise your radar if you, someone's promising you anything beyond what you can get at the uh, the federal government's you know 1.2 percent. That's guaranteed because right. because our federal government will maybe can cover that part of it. I think. What do you got there? I'm just thinking the word guaranteed. Anything over ten percent is not going to be a safe bet. No. Did you? I, this is interesting. And you know, I I carried around for a long time a big article about this, and then then I I just kind of ditched it because I never got around to it. But then it came up again this week too. And with all of the the push and the and the hoop and high, hoop and holler and how great clean energy is and we should all be doing this and you know for for the new jersey legislator to pull the plug on tesla motors and say you cannot sell a tesla in new jersey astonishes me i mean it's like uh, maybe they don't care about green energy back there they just care about their their unions and their their guidelines but the you cannot buy a new tesla in new jersey going forward and that's not the only state and i and i want to say even I want to say even California has some rules similar to that because there was a, one of the things that that a lot of the car dealers have been wanting to do, and I'm talking about General Motors and Ford and everybody else too, is to be able to sell you a vehicle online. So you could go online to you know GM.com and pick out your exact color and your exact engine and your exact upholstery and everything you wanted, order that thing and have it delivered. I mean that's and that's how they do it in Europe. I was talking to a friend of mine this it? week when we were talking about Tesla and and kind of the dealership thing and. Overseas, that's what they do. You go online or you go into the dealer, you pick out exactly what you want, they'll build it to you. Which is what Tesla does. You, I mean, yep. you, if you've been into one of their, I almost, I almost want to use the term kiosk rather than a, mm-hmm. you know, than a sales. I mean, you know, I was down in um, somewhere in Orange County or somewhere. I walked, it was going down to like a shopping mall and looked over there and there's a, you know, next to the pink berry, there was a, you could order your Tesla. I'll have, <laughs> I'll have the uh, strawberry yogurt and I'll take the, the red one with the, the, the red, you know, you can order them right there, but you got to order them. You got to wait. Right, um, which f- for some people is kind of ru- kind of ruins the buzz of go- of car-, car shopping, right? It's like when you go buy furniture. You ever buy furniture that now you can get a lot of places you can get it right there. But I remember in the past, you know, a lot of these places you buy some nicer stuff. We'll we'll, we'll deliver it to you, you know, next year. Yeah. <laughs> well, hell, I might not even like that style <laughs> next year. I don't, you know, I don't want to wait a year for my couch to show up. And well, that's kind of the, you know the deal with with the test a little bit too. But you look at um, a lot of the states, and I and I'll, I I. I don't know how it can be though, because in, in California you can buy a Tesla in in that manner, but I know that there's still some restrictions for GM and other places. You have to have a dealership, and so they're trying to protect these dealers, their ability to have a dealership and 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 do all that. But I don't know how, I don't know how Tesla's getting around it here, because you you can't buy a Ford and a Chevy that way, unless you order it and it goes through the dealer. So Musk is saying that the the company stores in New Jersey will now transition into being galleries where you can see the car, ask questions of the staff, but will not be able to discuss price or complete a sale in the store. However, that can be done in the Manhattan store across the river or in the King of Prussia store near Philadelphia. Yeah, so you got it's it's stupid. So what basically what New Jersey's misses out on, they don't get any any, ta- any tax revenue out of it. Right? So they just I don't I don't get it, but um you're supporting the dealerships who are putting up the monies to keep them in office yeah i guess i i mean i i understand it i mean I under, there's a lot of people who've invested a lot of money in their dealerships and um to be able to just you know do an end around is one thing but tesla isn't one of them so it's not it's like the same person who's going to buy a hundred thousand dollar tesla is not deciding between that and the impala right i mean i mean maybe they are but i don't think so but anyway i just i thought that was kind of kind of fascinating a little bit weird but I think you'll see, you'll you'll see that. I'd love. To, have you ever been in one of those things? Oh, they will snap your head back. And it's so weird. Cause there's there's no noise. It's just like it's it's like kind of like a, it reminds me of a roller coaster where they like all magnets and it just kind of 
shoots you out of a, it's like shooting out of a bullet, but there's no sound, and it's so weird not to have any any that engine you know firing up and going weird. I had the silver gray one sneak up on me in a parking lot on Thursday. I mean, sneak. I couldn't hear it, nothing turned around, and it was just they'll run your butt the over. Perfect color. It was beautiful, like it, it was, absolutely beautiful. If it didn't run you, if it didn't, it didn't hit you, still, right? I, well, I was to, hoping it was going to hit me. <laughs> I used take to take my knees out. I used to have that little um, that little Ford hybrid, the little Escape hybrid, and people would curse at me. Maybe it wasn't the hybrid. Maybe it was just me. But people would curse when I would be backing out. The engine wasn't going. And it's like if you if you didn't see the people walking, they'd be like, ah! you know, they would scream at you. I can't hear the damn thing. It's like, well, do, you know, don't walk behind a car that's moving. I mean, it's got the lights on. But I think that's why they came up with the little, the little beeper thing. You, you know, you beep at it. But I almost ran a few people over. Some of them on purpose, but some of them not so much. Chris, are you going to chime in with something genius on the hybrid? There, you looked like you wanted to talk. No, I was just looking at the different laws, and haven't found anything in California. That prevents you from doing that? No. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can't because the the Tesla's all over the place. But I I know that I read somewhere and I and and I and I had it forever in my bag that that you couldn't. My understanding is you couldn't you know you couldn't go on the GM website. The GM and these guys wanted to do the same thing and they weren't being allowed to. You know, in a lot of the states, if not most of the states. So I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. But uh, anyway, it's, it's probably had something to do with internet sales or ways to. You know, take care of the taxing, or I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's um, would you buy? Would you buy any car that way? Would you do that way, or do you like that feeling going going in and you got it? You, you bought your car that way. You ordered it. Okay, so she, we have one in there, but she's not normal. You know, she she'll wait. <laughs> the rest of us only want to get out and then and then, and then, and then like, give like, me your social security number and drive out with it the next yeah, an hour later. Right? Know, that is a fascinating deal, right? It's like you know, nobody. You know, it's like we have to go to get a home loan. You got to go through sixty five thousand steps, but you can drive out with a sixty thousand dollar car, or a hundred twenty thousand dollar twenty thousand dollar car. And my daughters always want to know how how, do, how come how come it comes with that really bad smell? How do they get rid of the bad smell? You figure that out. And then there are other people who want to get your car to smell like that. If right. They you. So which is it? Is it bad or good? I don't know. We're gonna take another break in here just a minute, but I do want to bring this up because you have exactly what is the date today? Fourteenth or fifteenth? Whatever. 15. You got two weeks, March 31st. This is a reminder that you, uh, some insured Americans maybe, maybe do not realize that if they don't sign up for health care by March 31st deadline, they'll be likely face penalties when filing their 2014 tax return next year. So you have to, now I'm, what it doesn't say, and what I'm not sure is, is, is there just like a box you check that says, yeah, I got health care? Or do you send a picture of your Kaiser card in? Or do you, I mean, what, what do you, how do you verify I believe you get a number from your employer, or f- if you're not, if you're self-employed, then you have uh, from the insurance company a number that you actually put in on your tax. On return. your return. So here's the penalty currently: ninety-five dollars per person, or one percent of your annual household income, whichever is greater. Um, if your income's below ten grand, there's no penalty. Uh, starting in 2015, the penalties go up to two percent of your income, or three hundred twenty-five dollars per person, whichever is greater. And those, the, da, 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 yeah. So now I don't know how the latest, see, this, this is one of those laws. It's like, if you, when you wake up tomorrow, it could be all changed again. Um, uh, Chris, did you get a number? Did they give you, how did you, how did you, you, you went through the system, the exchange? Got, well, just Kaiser card. Yeah. So maybe, maybe you just have to use that. So you, you actually have Kaiser. Yeah. But you went, but you went through the exchange, right? You go to California's website and then it, you, plug in your information and then it gives you different choices like blue shield kaiser and different different okay so i i thought i thought all those things were kind of like a like you got like an obama sticker and then you just went to any doctor you want huh? but maybe maybe california but california runs is running their system a little differently i think so so it's just basically it's like okay here are your different choices these are the different uh locations and that and these are your prices okay but why didn't you do that before on your own? You couldn't, or what? It was too expensive. Yeah, see, that's the so it's so like how much cheaper is it for you versus what you you would have done? About uh, more than half. Okay, and, see, and that's my concern is like where's that money coming from? So Chris is is Chris able to get it is able to get it half off? So there's got to be some yeah we're supposed to be bringing the whole group, but we've already said now that if you had any this is the ruling today, this week if you didn't if you had any trouble at all getting in we'll just let you not do it. So we cut the prices in half for people who are in, and we didn't bring any more people in, or we don't allow force them to come in. So we we're, we're missing out on the the funding source, and we're getting the expense without the funding source. That's the part that concerns me a little bit, I think. But it, you know, it changes every day, so I'm not sure. 
what's going on. But hopefully, either way, I'm sure the penalty will stick if you don't have something in place by March 31st. So you might want to check into that if you haven't. Let's do another quiz question. We'll get that out there. And remember, yes, we, our caller ID does not work here. So you must give us your name and number or your address if you're texting us at 441140. And we welcome your call at 339-1140 or 1-800-920-1140. Or you can stand there and send us smoke signals, in which case. So uh, this this employee or past employee, Keith Edwards of Chase, received a $64 million payout for what? Nice. Well, you said former employee? Former. Yes. Former employee, Keith Edwards of Chase, received a $64 million payout. What, what was this before? What did he do? Hmm. 339-1140. 1-800-920-1140. You can text us at 44-1140. And if you know Keith, I bet he's throwing a hell of a party <laughs> this week. Is he Irish? We could have like a little uh, Irish festival at his house there if we want to. It may be a while ago. 339-1140. You can text us at 44-1140. This is Talking Money. John Fodorero, Jeff Tarbell. We're going to be right back. Jack. Talking Money. Well, all righty then. We're back to talking money with Jeff Tarbell. Right, right. We did get a uh, winner there to the quiz question. So, a guy, former JP Morgan person left. Yes, Keith Edwards, who so, left. Did he just like own some own a bunch of stock and he, he got bought he out? He helped in alleging that the bank was falsely certifying FHA and VA loans. Ooh. So how do you get paid by that? So he uh, led this as a whistleblower. Oh. Whistleblower got the tips out, leading to uh, Chase actually making a payment of $614 million dollars uh, by the bank to the U.S. government. Oh, so the U.S. government then gets a 10%, oh. $64 million whistleblower payment. Oh. And does not work for Chase anymore. <laughs> well, he doesn't need to work for Chase That's anymore. Right. So what could we do around here, Chris? Got, we could probably blow the whistle on something around here. There's yeah. a illegal use of pens or something. We could probably get at least $5 for a sandwich or something. I don't want to keep your, hey, it makes you keep your eye on what you're doing. Around. What's he looking at me for? <laughs> You shouldn't take that sta- a Stapler home. I got a Stapler. sort of answer to your Tesla question. Yeah, okay. Well, they're saying that they can get around the franchise laws in different states because they've never had a franchise. Uh huh. So I, I don't really know what that means, but that's what they're saying. That's what I that, that was kind of my guess is they didn't they didn't already have a network established, so it's not like you're burning anybody because this is like a whole new product, and um, so you're not you're not taking somebody out, and and I think there was maybe some confusion there because you can certainly buy a car on the internet. In fact, I think almost every vehicle I've purchased lately over the last few years has been negotiated before I ever went to the dealership. You know, narrow it down to who's got it and then kind of, you know, let's get it let's get it on paper. Let's figure out what we're talking about. Then I'll come in and take, you know, take a look at it. I, I know what I'm looking for. And it, it works out to be a pretty, you know, hassleless environment that way. It's the way people call call on mortgages or anything else, you know, this call around and we'll find the right deal. Um, I try to try to buy locally and and keep keep the money in the in the same community if possible, but yeah, that was a good one. Um, what's I, gonna, I was going to bring this up. I, I don't know. what the, This doesn't have anything to do with anything, much like most of what comes out of my mouth. But what uh, – and we, I could use this as a quiz question, but we'll just throw it out here a little bit too. I thought this was kind of fascinating. They were interviewing the uh, marketing chief, Tony Pace of Subway, Subway Restaurants. And long story, but going to different things, I thought it was it was um, pretty fascinating. They were really trying to get, get him to start talking about advertising. They were trying to figure out, you know, are you – advertising on facebook or you advertising on tv you know where do you kind of where do you put your ad dollars and that's kind of the the gist of the story which i found i found very interesting um but what what do you think subway attributes well not they think they know what attributes from subway going from a small chain to being a billion dollar business what they made one key marketing idea and it took them from being, and everybody in their in their industry, everybody who's in, this, in that same food industry, said, "You are an idiot. That will not work. Don't try it. It's not going to work." And they blew right by everybody. And both these two just did it. What was five dollar foot long? Five dollar foot long. And everybody in 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 their category said, "That's too expensive." People, you know, remember for a while everything was going ninety nine cents. You can get a ninety nine cent burger. You can get ninety nine cent fries. Ninety nine cent, you know, all those things. 
And everybody looked at him and said, that's not going to work, dude. That's too much money. But they went with it. It was a four-week commitment. We're going to try it for a month. Five-hour foot long. We're going to try it for a month. Um, I think they still do it. I think they still do. <laughs> and it, it made them into a billion. I saw billion. that song in my head. Exactly. They, they, and so, and that, and that brings up a couple of things. They, you think about now. Think about a Subway ad. Now the jingle is number one, but Subway, and, and that was so that kind of got them back around to you know how do you how do you guys look at marketing and, and different things? And they and they were talking about you know all the different marketing from outdoor marketing, which would be you know billboards as you drive by, directories, magazines, radio, newspaper, desktop, laptop, and mobile and TV, and. Subway still says that number one is, t- you know, is, is TV. There's no way around it. Uh, I mean, it's the number one. People more spend more money on TV th- than ever. Um, and here's kind of the breakdown that they estimate for this year in terms of uh, U.S. ad spending in billions of dollars. So number one is TV at 68, almost $69 billion. And that's dwarfs the rest of the categories combined. But so look at this mobile advertising. What's their gross revenues a year? My gosh! No, this is no, this is not just for this is not for Subway. This is oh, okay. Com- com- <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> that is what? one hell of a lot of footlongs <laughs> to get. We're gonna. Uh, this is for everybody. But look at mo- mobile advertising in 2010 was basically zero, and in 2014 is expected to be about 15 billion dollars equivalent of radio. Uh, it's just slightly behind newspaper. And, and much above everything else. I didn't know people even still advertise in directories. Did, and did you see they dropped? The, they, they have now dropped the white pages. You can only they're only going to be yellow pages out. I didn't know so that. There won't be. Yeah. And, I, and once in once in a great but while, they're still doing yellow pages. Oh, they're still doing the yellow. Page. And once in a great while, someone someone will call me, and I'll say, you know, Daddy, how did you get my number? Oh, I saw you in the yellow pages. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> no, I, I saw your ad. In, I, I don't have an ad in the yellow pages, <laughs> but it, I mean, it was just a business listing. That'll t- totally throw you off, but people still advertise in, in the yellow pages. Uh, outdoor, you know, outdoor, outdoor advertising. Most everything else is kind of holding its own, except for mobile is, is expanding. Desktop, laptop is holding the same. Newspaper is going down. And, ra- and radio is basically holding itself. So, And I've always done very well with radio. And I've done radio and, and TV. And I don't have a face for TV, which hurts. Um, but it hurts us too. <laughs> it does. I quit using my own, my own image in there. But there is something about a TV ad that gets all the senses. It's got the song. It's got the visual. It's got you know. It gets it all together, and it does. It does burn a hole in your memory, much greater than than almost anything else. And I would say, with the exception of, uh, for me, it was radio with a jingle. People will remember a jingle if you if you do it enough. Yeah. A- people still see me the ATM mortgage jingle to this day. Okay, ATM Mortgage was closed down five, almost six years ago, and people still know that jingle. It's crazy. It's crazy. Great. So um, yeah, but they, I don't. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't do any good anymore. But it burned in their head. You're branded. I yeah, branded. Yeah, branded on my backside. <laughs> that music means we got to wrap it up. Are you ready to be audited? We'll have to bring in this next week. Yeah. No thanks. Yeah. If you make a million dollars or higher, a congratulations. B. There's an 11 percent chance you'll be audited next next year. We'll cover that as well. There's all kinds of stuff to do. I didn't even get to. I didn't get half the stuff. What do, what do I do for like a whole hour? I don't know. I mean, that's probably the question of the day. I'm not really sure. We got to go. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. The Talk of Money Facebook page will host the repeat of the show if you want to listen to it or you missed it. Of course, if you missed it right now, you're not listening. So how would you know? You can find it at uh, johnfodfod.com during the week. And uh, John will help you out with anything you want to do. Purchase, refinance, reverse, even a little rehab on a 203K construction loan. I'm getting a lot of those calls lately, too. Oh, yeah? Must be, yeah, I think there's a few, house, few houses that are kind of beaters that are on there. A good neighborhood, but not a good house. You can do those, too. So johnfod.com or jefftarbell.com. We'll catch up with you next Saturday, everybody. Be cool. Let's pray for some more rain. We'll see you next week, everybody.